recording has started. Alright, then let's talk about the FinFET technology. This is a major breakthrough in the past uh, decade. And uh, here we show the traditional planar bulk transistor we have talked about before in this 3030. So here we show the structure like this. And here this side is a source, the other side is a drain, and we have the gate here. And here this is the gate oxide here in this region. We will have the gate oxide. Of course, it's, uh, there are some thickness of the oxide. It's hard to draw, but here is the gate oxide region. And then the gate is covering the channel. Of course, the oxide will separate the gate and the channel. So the channel is where the current flows. That is the surface of this silicon. So you have a silicon substrate, and the top surface of the silicon will become the channel when you turn on the transistor above the threshold. And then you have the current flow on the surface. So this is a planar structure. And the thin fat is different, you see here. The thin fat, first of all, the name thin fat, the fin, uh, comes from the fish, you know, in a fish. So this is like a very, this is a fin, so it's very thin. You think about the fish, the fin of the fish is very thin. So this is like a fish fin. This part is still the silicon, so here you see the gray region is silicon. So now the silicon is no longer a planar structure. This fin is standing out from the substrate. So you have this fin vertically uh, on top of the silicon. Now the still this side is a source, the other side is a drain, and you still have the gate here. But the gate oxide will be like the side wall of this fin. So it's like the gate runs the fin by this gate oxide. So here, probably I, I should make this uh, this side to be dash because it's hide is hidden on the other side. But this is like the gate oxide surrounding this uh, fin. So still the current is uh, flowing in this silicon. But this fin is typically very thin. So the gate actually will, con will cover two sides of the fin. You have two side wall. So the gate will cover those two sides. And what, what is the advantage here? In the traditional planar structure, the gate will only cover the top surface of the channel. The other bottom surface of the channel is the, the substrate, which the gate has no control. But in this case, the current is flowing through this fin, and fin both left and right that wall are controlled by the gate. In other words, the gate control is enhanced in the fin fat. This is what we desire. Because as we discussed earlier, the challenge for the short channel effect is that the gate lost control of the channel and the drain voltage affects the source to the channel barrier height. But if the gate can couple stronger to the channel through this kind of 3D geometry innovation, then the gate can regain the control of the channel by this double siding uh, uh, coupling. Therefore, the thin fat can enable the scaling to smaller technology nodes.
which you can further scale like this L. So any questions about the 3D FinFET concepts? Okay, then let's look at the history of the FinFET. So in 1998, the first N-type FinFET was designed and implemented by a research group from UC Berkeley. And uh, this work was published in the conference called IEDM, International Electron Device Meeting, which is a premier venue for industry and uh, research groups in universities to publish the latest uh, progress of the research. And uh, this was original design from the paper and uh, this results uh, are led by a research group uh, of Professor Chen Min Hu at UC Berkeley. And you know Professor Hu was the author of the reference book we used for the first half of the semester. Professor Hu is regarded as the inventor of the FinFET, and he was highly recognized in this field. I believe like he received the Medal of Freedom from President Obama like a few years ago. He was truly really a pioneer in this field. So this is the uh, uh, measured data from the first FinFET transistor. This is ID versus the VGS, of course, in the log scale. So we see a very good substratial slope. And here are the dimensions for the original design, like the gate length and the fin width and fin height. And this is ID versus the VD. And we see nearly perfect saturation. So here you see the saturation is almost flat. That's an indicator of the good gate control instead of the dream control because dream voltage if it's not well designed you know the dream voltage will make the current further increase in the saturation so here this result suggests the FinFET was a good approach to scale the transistor down to here you see like 30 nanometer in the gate length this was more than 20 years ago so made by a re university research group. So this was very impressive. Of course, this is a result of a single transistor. To manufacture this kind of transistor in the whole wafer, you know, one chip and like billions of transistor, it will take a lot of efforts. So after this paper, the industry uh, borrowed this idea and uh, continue develop this process. And uh, how many years from 98 to 2012, that was 14 years industry research and development. Eventually, Intel first commercialized the FinFET technology into their 22 nanometer production. So this is the so-called tri-gate process from Intel. I believe that Intel renamed the FinFET to tri-gate to avoid some patent uh, issues with UC Berkeley. Anyway, so this is trigate. Why trigate? Because if you think about the fin, we mostly talk about the two sides, but actually the top is also covered by the gate. So actually you have three three sides. Uh, so that's why we call trigate. No, or let's say Intel call trigate in this case. And I think most of the literature still call it fin fat structure. So here, this is an image from the microscope on the Intel's uh, chip. So here we see those fin fat structure. And here, this is the fin. This is the fin. This is a fin. And it's very thin. So here is probably the drain, and this is the source. And then here we see the gate is rounding the fin like this. So here you see other transistors as well. So here probably you have the 
MOS here, PMOS here, so therefore you can have an inverter here. So this is uh, uh, the 3D bird eye view, but if we take slices, so for example, if we cut a slice along the gate direction, if we cut this slice, and then we will look at the side view from here. And this is what you see. This this image is what you cut along the gate direction and then look into the drain fed from the source side. So you will see source and drain in and out of the plane. And then this uh, gate surrounding the fin, like this. So the fin is very thin. You see only 8 nanometer in the thickness. This fin width and fin height is 34 nanometer. This is a first generation. And later, you are going to, I mean, if you look at today's transistor, this will be even thinner and probably it's 4 or 5 nanometer. And this will be even higher, like uh, 60 or 70 nanometer. So this is uh, 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 from this uh, first slice. And second slice, what you can do is to cut along the uh, fins direction. You can cut along this direction. And then look into this from the side. So if you do that, you cut here, cut along this direction, and look from the side. Then this is the image from that angle. So here you see the source and the drain contact. And here is the gate. And this is a fin, one side, one side wall of the fin. And the gate pitch, that is the distance between the source contact and drain contact, is 19 nanometer in this case. And this is the IDVG curve for the Intel's 22 nanometer transistor for MOS and PMOS. PMOS, you know, the gate voltage is negative. And the SS subthreshold slope is pretty good, like 70, around 70 millivolt per decade. So this is close to the ideal. 60 millivolt per decade. So this is uh, the Intel's uh, first generation, and if you are interested, you can also look at this uh, YouTube video, uh, which will talk about the Intel's process in more details. Any questions? Okay, so here, let me just summarize some of the technology trends you see in the transistor design. And as we discussed, the gate stack uh, has gone through the high-k metal gate innovation. And uh, the idea is to change the k value, the dielectric constant of the oxide. Therefore, you can have larger COX, which will help with the larger ion, and also can keep the gate leakage low. And uh, also from the Substantial slope point of view, you can make the S value smaller. So this is the gate stack. And also from the channel material, uh, so one idea is to increase the mobility because the current, you know, is mu COX W over L, and then you have the voltage, the saturation current. So you increase COX, and then you can also increase the mu, the mobility. One way to increase the mobility is to apply stress to the uh, channel. So the stress can be applied by some capping layer on top of the transistor structure, which can apply the stress to the channel. Either you can compress the channel, or you can make the channel extend. So this is uh, 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 to change the distance of those atoms in the channel, and then the electrons or the carriers, when they move, when they travel through the channel, they will see different scattering because the distance of those atoms will be different if you apply mechanical stress. So this is one way. The other way is to change the silicon to some alloy between silicon and germanium. So today's transistor, if you really do the material analysis, you find out that the channel material, especially for PMOS, it's no longer silicon, it's silicon germanium all the way. And then we talk about the uh, fin fat structure. 
Okay, so to make the transistor structure from this planar bulk transistor to the three dimensional fin phase structure, so here if this is a fin, then you can have the gate surround the surrounding the fin like those three sides. This multi gate structure. This can provide better gate control, therefore you can overcome the short channel effect and then have less of current. So here, this is a FinFET structure, and the FinFET structure, as Intel claimed, is a tri-gate structure. There are three sides of the gate uh, coverage. But then the question is, why not four gates? So here, actually, this is the next step. Since you can do the gate on three sides, why not cover it on the bottom as well? Therefore, you can have like a gate all around structure. So you can imagine if you have a, like a, a nano wire, nano scale wire, and then you can have a nano scale wire, and then you can have the gates surrounding the wire. Next, 360 degree fully coverage. That will give you the best gate control. And this is exactly the proposal by the industry to switch to this so-called stacked nanowire and stacked nanosheet process for the next three nanometer process. So I will briefly talk about that. So the idea is very simple. So if you can make a fin, why not make a nanowire or nanosheet? For example, if it's nanowire, you can have a nanowire like this. So this is a piece of silicon, and then you make the like a nanoscale, maybe 10 nanometer in diameter, and then make it like a nanowire. And then the stack nanowire means you are going to stack stack multiple multiple nanowires vertically like this. You can and, and you, you can do this, and then in between you still have the so this is like a big fin, but within the fin you can embed multiple nanowire or nano sheet. Then between that is still oxide, and this one is a silicon. So this is oxide in between. So the gate oxide is separating the different, uh, oops, different nanowire. And then, so the, sorry, I would say the oxide will surround those nanowire, and in between you can have a big metal. So let's it this way. So the oxide is going to surround in each nanowire, and then you have metal. Then all of those nanowires will be controlled by the same gates if you have metal. So this is uh, the proposal for the 3 nanometer transistor in the next uh, maybe 2 or 3 years. And what's the benefit of this one? First of all, you can have the fully control of the channel through this kind of all around it all around a structure. Secondly, you can increase the current without increasing the natural uh, dimension. And because the W you see here current, right? We always want higher on current to to make the circuit faster. So W over L. So if you have a planar buck transistor, then the only way to increase W is to increase the physical two-dimensional space when you build the transistor then you have to make the W larger. Right? So this is the W, this is the OL. So you have to make the W larger to make larger currents. But if we do this vertical stacked nanowire, then within the same two-dimensional space or footprint, you can stack multiple wires. If you want larger current, you can simply just stack more wires vertically. Therefore, you don't consume the natural space. So this is a stacked nanowire or nanosheet structure that the industry is currently working on. Any questions? All right, then let's uh, talk about the industry model for the semiconductor business. 
So that's three business models. The first one is the foundry, and foundry is the manufacturing factories. And uh, the major player is the TSMC, and TSMC is uh, taking more than 60% of the market share. And then followed by the like, global foundry, UMC, MIG, and so on. And then second one is the Fabnis company, or design house. So the foundry will not do any design. It will just take the design from those design companies. And the Fabnis design company will not do the manufacturing. So the interface between those two will be the layout of the circuit. So the, the design house will design the chip and give the geometry like those layouts, which uh, 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 location has the metal, which location has the MOS, which location has the uh, wire, and give that information, like a layout, to the foundry, and foundry will manufacture the chips. So the notable design house, like the Qualcomm, Broadcom, Avail, NVIDIA, AMD, MediaTek, and so on, the long list for this one. And uh, uh, then the third model is the IDM. This is integrated device manufacturer. So basically, this is a combination of the foundry and fabulous design. So that means a single company can do both architecture and circuit design as well as the chip manufacturing. Like Intel is a good example. It can design everything, its processor from the architecture down to the uh, process. And the Samsung also is a giant. Uh, in this field, it can do everything. And actually, Samsung also outsource, uh, I mean, offers a foundry service to other companies, like those design house. Uh, uh, I miss Apple here. So, for example, Samsung also also manufacture the designs from other companies as well. This has its own design. And IBM used to be this kind of IDM, but IBM uh, step out from the manufacturing a few years ago, and IBM sold the foundry to Global Foundry. So this is the uh, uh, um, logic companies. And then the memory companies, like we discussed, the DRAM and the flash memory, they are very separate, very different process flow. Therefore, they need different manufacturing, design and manufacturing. So here are some major players for the memory uh, business. Samsung is also number one in the memory business, like the DRAM and uh, NAND flash. And then SanDisk uh, was acquired by Western Digital a few years ago. Uh, this is another important player. And then Toshiba last year renamed to be for, uh, Kiyosha. Uh, and this is uh, uh, from Japan. And then SK Hynix from Korea and uh, Intel and Micron. Uh, if you follow the recent news, I think a few weeks ago, Intel announced they're going to split, spin off the memory business to SK Hynix. So basically, SK Hynix will acquire Intel's NAND flash uh, units. So Intel will no longer work on the memory, and uh, SK Hynix will take over that part. And uh, actually, this kind of consolidation is uh, uh, becoming more and more frequent in this business. If you follow the news, uh, the tech news, in the recent two or three months, there are some big announcements. Uh, for example, uh, NVIDIA is going to buy the ARM. You know, ARM is the IP design, IP vendor for the, you know, the, the uh, mobile phone processor architecture. And then AMD is going to buy Xilinx. Xilinx. Hope I spell it right. So Xilinx is uh, the number one FPGA vendor. And uh, uh, actually a few years ago, Intel already acquired number two in the FPGA field. That is uh, Altera FPGA. It's already part of Intel a few years ago, and AMD is trying to catch up in the FPGA field and 
so AMD will buy the Zilinx. And uh, there's a rumor that Qualcomm is going to buy the NXP, which is a major vendor for the automotive electronic uh, chips. So there are many uh, 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 business going on in this field. So this is a very fluid uh, situation right now in terms of those uh, industry landscape. And uh, here, this is the uh, map for the 300, 300 millimeter fab uh, in US. So 300 millimeter is 12 inch. If you recall the uh, very beginning of the semester, I showed the video that the silicon wafers uh, are made uh, 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 from the sand. So the wafer size is like 12 inch. And uh, we say this is a 12 inch pizza and you build the chip on top of that. So here in US, the major plant for the 300 millimeter uh, uh, fabrication. And so here Intel is uh, mostly doing its research and also the manufacturing in the Portland, uh, Oregon. And also Intel has quite a few fabs in Phoenix, Arizona. And there's some news that TSMC is going to build a new fab in Phoenix, Arizona in next year. And uh, TSMC is hiring a lot in Arizona. And then Samsung has a fab in Austin, Texas. And then the upstate New York, IBM used to operate the fab there. But as I said, IBM sold the fab to Global Foundry. Now it's uh, global boundary there. And then the memory company like the Micron, I think its uh, headquarters is in Boise, Idaho. And so they have the fab there. And also I believe they have some fabs in Salt Lake City. So those are the major fabs in US. And uh, uh, this is uh, the landscape. Any questions? And lastly, I want to show the ranking of those companies in terms of the sales revenue. And let's look at uh, from a historical perspective, then you will understand why the, how the industry uh, changes in the past uh, 15 years. So this is a 20, uh, 2006 and top 25 uh, leaders in semiconductor. And number one, Intel, number two, Samsung. At that time, TI is doing good. TI is Texas Instrument. And then ST, Microelectronics. This is a company owned by France and Italy in Europe. And then Toshiba, Japan. And TSMC at that time, number six. And then we have some other vendors. Uh, Hynix is memory. And the Renaissance, Freescale, Freescale, NXP are all like those uh, automotive uh, 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 electronics vendors that are doing those parts for the automotive uh, uh, chips for the use usage in the cars, for example. And then this is uh, 20, uh, 2006, and then 2010. So you see here Intel is number one still, Samsung is number two. Toshiba number three, but now you say TSMC is uh, rising, rising up, and uh, uh, this is because more and more company decide to do the design only, and then they will use a foundry to fabricate the chips. That's why many orders go to TSMC, and then TI is uh, uh, declining, and then. For the first time, you see Qualcomm jump to number 10. So this is uh, at the very beginning of our mobile era for the, I mean, the, the, the smartphone business at the very beginning, 2010. And then 2014, you see Intel number one, Samsung number two, TSMC now number three because of the foundry business is going so well. 
and uh, number four Qualcomm because this is like the peak time for the smartphone business. So so Qualcomm is uh, uh, number four in terms of sales. And then you see the Micron and SK Hynix. Micron at that time acquired a company called Epita from the uh, Japan. And then Micron become number five and SK Hynix number six. Those are the memory only companies who just do the DRAM and flash. So the memory become important. The reason is the still like the uh, smartphone business, right? So then the smartphone are all enabled by SSD, right? the solid state drive that is land flash. And also, I think in the past decade, the computer, like a regular laptop and desktop, and even the data center has transitioned from the hard disk drive to SSD that will boost this memory business, like the Micron and SK Hynix. Of course, Samsung is also a major player in memory. So this is uh, 2014, and in 2018, Samsung become number one, because Samsung does everything, like a logic uh, processor, and also Samsung provide foundry service to other companies, and Samsung is uh, doing its own NAND flash and DRAM. You know? So Samsung become number one, and Intel drop to number two. I believe Intel starts struggling around 2018. Intel used to be the leaders in all those technology innovations, as I introduced earlier, like the high metal gate was introduced by Intel first, and FinFET was introduced by Intel first. But Intel started struggling, I think, two or three years ago, and lost the position and to TSMC, for example, in terms of the uh, logic scaling. So now Intel is, uh, is still uh, lagging behind. And then you see SK Hynix, Micron, and TSMC. So those are the companies doing well because of the boundary or the memory. So this is uh, 2018, and I don't have the updated uh, list for this year, 2020. I think that will be available after end of this year. But I believe this year there are many uh, changes possibly uh, uh, due to the consolidation and the a uh, uh, new business. For example, the NVIDIA uh, 2018 jumped to number 10 because of the GPU is becoming more and more important uh, in the machine learning, deep learning acceleration. So NVIDIA is be, uh, 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 doing great, and I believe this year AMD will also doing great. So those are the very fluid uh, landscape in the industry. I just want to give you some ideas uh, about the uh, real industry. This will not be part of your exam. All right, a quick summary. So the same scaling, historically, in like uh, every two years, we have a new generation. But I think this will become very challenging in the next few years due to the uh, uh, difficulty in the scaling unless we switch to like uh, the stacked nanowire structure. And the uh, FinFET structure was a success uh, in the last uh, decade and uh, it helped with the short channel effect because of the enhanced gate control. And we see a lot of fabulous companies and uh, we also see a lot of consolidation uh, in the industry. And the memory companies also uh, revived in the past few years due to the demand of, for the SSD. All right, I think that's all for this uh, lecture 20. So any questions? Homework 5Q2, do we need to consider the area of C core? Uh, area of core and cache. So, 
you let me say what what, what is the q2 No, so this one is just the D run. So this is a uh, just the D run. You just uh, uh, use the D run cell size and the capacity of the D run, and then the D run chip total area, and you can get the area efficiency. So the D run chip, as we discussed, is off chip. It's not on the same chip as a processor. So you should not consider any other like cache or other logic. Okay, so any other question before we stop here today? If no, then we will stop here and thank you.